All right. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to On the Fritz Gaming. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit differently. Uh, and of course, I say today, and I actually mean for the next several parts, we'll be doing something a little bit differently. Because uh, normally I give my live reactions to everything that's happening, live commentary. Uh, this weekend, however, which is when I usually record, I was called away on a family emergency. And I did not take all of my recording equipment because there's there's a lot of it. There's a lot of effort and cords that go into making the sound quality as nice as it sounds. So I was able to record the gameplay and the audio, which you're hearing now, is being added in after the fact. But to talk a little bit about my first impressions of the game, uh, I definitely thought that it was definitely a neat idea how we're starting off as the champion of Kanto, or not the champion of Kanto, uh, the champion of Hoenn, uh, oh right, uh, the level 80 Rayquaza that they give you at the start of the game, I was, I mean it made sense, right, it really just further emphasizes the whole fact that you're the champion of Hoenn, because who else would have the, you know, the legendary sky dragon aside from the champion? And then, of course, this is also the part where we learn that there's a storm going in through Johto, so the security guard does not advise that you travel to Johto. Uh, so we learn that we're essentially trapped in Kanto. Of course, if we had fly, it would be a non-issue. But to elaborate a little bit more on why I chose to call myself Harry for this playthrough, a bit of an odd reference, uh, but one of the things that really stuck with me about the third generation games is how this is one of the few uh, Pokemon games, in fact, where you have your father, where your father is present. I mean, not present in the means that he's with you at home, he's a couple cities away, you know, leading the gym. Um, but, you know, you have a dad for the first, and I'm pretty sure the only time in the entire Pokemon series, because normally it's just your mom. But yeah, of course, the father's name is Norman, and I just had Spider-Man on the mind. And of course, uh, the Green Goblin's real name is Norman Osborn, and he has a son named Harry Osborn. So that was ultimately my decision making for calling him Harry. <laughs> a bit longer story, I know, than it probably deserves, in all honesty. But yeah, but we just passed a little while ago. Uh, a lady asking for, she was either asking for a Pachirisu or uh, giving away a Pachirisu, and that's something that we would come to learn as the series goes on. A lot of the NPCs are just asking for Pokemon, so a lot of the people who just had flavor text in the original game just want to trade in this one, and I guess that encourages people to talk to more NPCs, because I know one of the reasons why a lot of people don't talk to NPCs is because I think they have nothing to offer. Uh, so, for instance, everyone up here is just waiting for Bill to arrive. Uh, Bill, who you don't know, is the original creator of the PC system, or at least uh, the first generation creator, because, of course, uh, with every new generation, it's somebody else. Um, unfortunately, I can't really speak more about the NPCs in uh, Fire, Le uh, Fire, Led Fire Red and Leaf Green, which this game is clearly taking inspiration from, because I have actually never played Fire Red and Leaf Green officially. The first ever Pokemon game that I ever played was uh, Pokemon Emerald, and I never really looked... I can't really say I never really looked back, because Fire Red and Leaf Green, of course, came after Ruby and Sapphire, if I remember correctly. Um, but that pretty much satiated my my desire for Pokemon until the release of uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl a few years later for the DS. Because, of course, I was... Um, I really only was around for the tail end of the GBA's lifespan. I was really more of a DS 
guy growing up was basically around for its entire lifespan, even going on into the DSi days and the 3DS days. But yeah, and then of course my I would eventually replace my copy of uh, Pokemon Pearl, or not Pokemon Pearl, Pokemon Diamond, with Pokemon Platinum, which is pretty much the definitive uh, Generation 4 experience. And yeah, this is... I was initially confused when I ran into this guy here. Um, because of course, you know, you have a level 80 Rayquaza, or Rayquaza, uh, to their level 4 Caterpie. And I was questioning whether I should really be here. I mean, of course, May directs you this way uh, to be Professor Oak, to meet with Professor Oak. Uh, but then, of course, they have that whole, who are your reaction? And I think, okay, no, this was definitely um, intended. So, essentially, if you did not bother to check what Pokemon you had um, up to that point, that would have been your first, your first realization that, oh, you have a legendary Pokemon on your team. Um, and, of course, Oak gives us new Pokedexes, obviously, as if the ones from Hoenn weren't good enough. And not to say that getting stripped of my Rayquaza here bothered me. I mean, it makes sense. It's a level 80 Pokemon and everything else for the time being is going to only be in the single digits. But something that I might play around with... Oh, and, at the, and yeah, and at this moment we still, we still have it. Um, but one of the things that I may play around with either in my free time or when I definitely get around to doing a Nuzlocke of this one. And here we see that they're borrowing the the black and white sprites. And I ultimately chose Bul Bulbasaur because he's my favorite. And yeah, as we'll see here, I call him a uh, Pond Hopper, which is a really obscure dorkly reference, admittedly. And of course, as always, I try to steal the last Pokemon, and I'm hoping that one of these days, one of these ROM hikes will let me actually do that. But yeah, one of the things I might want to try in the future, either in my free time, or when I inevitably do a Nuzlocke in this game, is try to catch a Pokemon before um, coming to Oak's Lab. Um, and then having that basic, you know, level for whatever on my team and then placing the Rayquaza in the PC, and see if I can't still have the Rayquaza, essentially. And then of course here, you know, your typical... Your typical rival battle. Just spamming tackle. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised by how little damage uh, the Charmander was doing, because of course, uh, Charizard... Charizard... The Charizard line is kind of the powerhouse of the of the Generation 1 starters. Uh, but then I figured that, you know, my Bulbasaur must just have really high defense or something. And then like that, she's on her way, or not. Ah, yes, and then this is where... Uh, if you didn't talk to the people up on Route 2, this is where you discover what those people um, on Route 2 were waiting for. Apparently, Bill has this big invention that he's trying to show off. And... Yeah. And here we see that I'm a little... Uh, I've never been diagnosed with OCD, uh, but I do like things to be alphabetized, especially in my Pokemon games. Uh, so you will see me a lot of the times going into that screen there. Here we have a Sines. And you'll see me a lot of the times going into that screen and reorganizing the names by alphabetical order. And as always, there's that little potion waiting for us in the PC. Uh, shame they took that away, because I thought it was... I mean, it's a, it's a small secret, but for the start of the game, you know, 20 hit points in an instant is kind of... kind of a blessing. And as usual, it's 
really dark. Uh, there's no way to get to the second floor of Blue's house for some reason. They were here. Here we meet Daisy. Blue's sister. Also known as um, Green, I believe. In some Pokemon continuities. And this is not officially a Nuzlocke or anything. You know, if Pokemon faints, I'm not going to put them in the PC forever. Uh, but something that I have adopted from Nuzlocke I've done my past is just catching and nicknaming everything. Or nicknaming everything and then catching the first thing that I see. Um, which in this case was a Pidgey. Um, and the reason for that is just because obviously the the thing with Pokemon, the theme is, you know, you gotta catch them all. And I've never done that at any point uh, in my, let's just call it my career. You know, in my time playing Pokemon, I've never caught every single one. Uh, largely because, you know, you need somebody with a second uh, copy of the game to do that. You, know, you have to rely on trades. And then, of course, as time went on and the rosters got more and more bloated, it became more and more difficult to catch everything. Alright, so basically if I limit myself to the first thing that I see on every route, that means that I'm catching a lot less than I normally am, which means that I don't have to grind as much because I have a smaller amount of Pokemon on my team. And here you can see me really struggling to name this Pidgey. Um, I got the idea to do Glam Metal, which if you've never heard of Glam Metal, it was a uh, style of rock and roll that was really popular, I want to say, during the 70s and 80s and it was it was rock and roll but it was very glitzy it was very glamorous um jen and the holograms was a good example of glam metal um and you can even see me right here trying to name her hologram because i thought jen was a bit too basic and then ultimately decided against that because what sense does that make um and the reason I went with Clam Metals because of uh, Pidgeotto's, not Pidgeotto's, Pidgeot's um, mane, you know, or hair or headdress or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and as you can see, the boy here is still distraught. But yeah, I ultimately just settled on Clam. Oh. Nothing too crazy. And that's an that's honestly an even more obscure reference. Uh, I have a game on my phone, which you will likely never see because I don't have the software to record it, uh, but there's a game that I learned from, learned through Wrestling With Regret that's called uh, 80s Mania Wrestling Returns, and basically it's a wrestling promotion business, simu uh, business simulator where you are the commissioner and the booker of a wrestling federation during the 80s and eventually the 90s, and hopefully the 2000s if they ever get around to updating the game again and they have a character in the game uh, a lot of them are parodies of, of uh, things that were around during that time so instead of the Terminator you have the Annihilator instead of Sloth from the Goonies you have Drool instead of Little Mac you have Max Attack and so on and so forth um, and one of the characters they have on there is a Gen and the Holograms parody called simply Clam um And that's, and that is the the long, not the short, the long of why I named Glam, Glam. And this is when things got unexpectedly difficult and made me very grateful that I wasn't doing a Nuzlocke, because this Pidgey just had absurdly high attack. Uh, and the only saving grace was Glam's, you know, keen eye, because it kept trying to blow my accuracy, and Glam was having none of it. Uh, 
But yeah, if I had to draw any comparisons between this game and Pokemon Uranium, uh, this game is definitely a lot more... Sudden, I guess would be the proper word for it. Um, of course, you saw that the... In some places it's smoother, and in some places it's not. So, of course, one of the things that a lot of people who've played Pokemon know about, or are familiar with, is when you take your Pokemon to the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy puts them in one at a time, and then, of course, the chime starts. But in this case, it's very subtle. In this case, all of them are placed at the same time, and then the jingle happens. So, it doesn't quite have that same build-up. And then, of course, we see that that gentleman got a little impatient, but thankfully cleared the way for us to inch past. And where's he going with this? Okay. Uh, the battle animations, though, for Fusion Generation are a lot better than that of Pokemon Uraniums. You know, it looks and... It looks a lot similar to an official Pokemon battle than Pokemon Uranium does. Because, of course, I don't know what the problem is. I haven't quite figured it out yet. But it's very jumpy, right? It's not as smooth. It's not as seamless. The, the bars go down so fast that the game can't keep up. Whereas, you know, you injure something in this game, as we'll see here, it's, it's very smooth descent. It's a very smooth decrease. It's a lot smoother. Um, and that is kind of unfortunate, because uh, I want to say it's very... I feel very uneasy showing the battle animations of Pokemon Uranium, even though there's inevitably going to be a lot of them, because this is Pokemon. Battling is what you're going to be doing 90% of the time. I want to say. You know, so that screen, that layout, that's something you're going to be seeing a lot of. And I feel kind of bad uh, showing that part off when the quality of it is not there. Uh, Pokemon Fusion Generation, meanwhile, it it's a lot more smooth. And again, I don't know what the reason for that is, but it's a lot more smooth. Um, and then, of course, Kata Weedle here. Uh, and it's inevitably going to evolve into Beedrill, because it gets there at level 10. And I ultimately decided to go with the name Vanessa, because I had bees on the mind, because of course Weedle evolves into Beedrill, and I thought, what's a good name for a bee? And then I remembered that DreamWorks Bee Movie exists. And then I thought to myself, what was the name of um, Renee Zellweger's character from that? It was Vanessa. And it was about at this point that I was going on my phone to check to see that I spelled Vanessa right, because never in my life have I actually met a Vanessa. So I did not know off the top of my head how to spell it, but clearly I seem to understand English spellings enough to spell it correctly on my first attempt. Snag ourselves here a, a netball. Um, and something that I don't remember um, showcasing. Uh, the guy at the start uh, gave us 10 Pokeballs, which is the most amount of Pokeballs I think I've ever been given at the start of a Pokemon game. But yeah, Viridian Forest is a pretty big area for the first force of the game, admittedly. Um, I forget what I was playing. Um... I want to say there's a forest early on in Pokemon Platinum. Um, I think it's called the Eternia Forest. I'm not quite sure. Um, the names, the names in that game, confuse me a bit. Um, don't quite have as firm a grasp on them as I do other names. Um, but that's another early forest in the game that I that is unexpectedly expansive, and that I tend to get lost it, admittedly. Um, 
which is why I'm thankful that they added in the little partner person, um, whose name also escapes me in Pokemon Platinum, because that way, she's just constantly healing your Pokemon, and you never have to worry about going back to the Pokemon Center to get your buds healed up. I eventually round the corner and discover that there's Pokemon trainers waiting for us. So I ultimately decided to grind for a bit, uh, just get the folks that I had, Pond Topper, Vanessa, and Glam, uh, somewhere in the double digits. I felt like that would prepare me enough for what lies ahead. Do let me know if you rather um, live reactions or post reactions, because I have no problem making the switch if people rather this format than the other one. Uh, thank you, one and all, for tuning in. Hopefully you'll stick it out for the long haul. Um, and until then, see you in part two.